There we go. Thank you, Zoom. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Jonas Cartano, and I'm from Third Eye Cultural Collaborative. I've been working with Lisa Simmons from the Mass Cultural Council on a series of four webinars about festival audiences. This webinar is the third of four um, that we've been doing this summer. And I wanted to remind you to save the date for the fourth webinar, um, which will be on Friday, August 6th. Um, and we just decided uh, on the topic, uh, we're talking about designing surveys for festival audiences. So it'll actually sort of be a continuation of what we discussed here with data collection, but it's also like not dependent on what we present today. So if you have colleagues who might be interested, they should still come. Um, and uh, a quick note that these webinars, these webinars are being recorded and will be posted onto Mass Cultural Council's YouTube page. Um, and today, we're going to talk about data collection. Um, we'll, we encourage you to actively use the chat function to pose questions and comment. And Allison may see um, the chat and address some questions and comments along the way. Uh, but I'll also just be monitoring it uh, throughout the webinar. And I'll make sure that we circle back to any questions that we might have missed along the way. Um, so we're going to just go ahead and dive in. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Allison to you. Uh, she and I are co-founders and partners at Third Eye Cultural Collaborative, um, and her background is varied in very great ways. Um, she has a background in nonprofit management and strategic thinking and grant making, as well as program, program assessment and evaluation. And I'll let Allison kind of give you an overview of today's webinar and then just kind of take it away from here. Allison. Thank you, Jonas. Hi, everybody. It's great to see your faces, especially those that are on camera and those that are not. I receive your names and we will exchange energy through this camera. Uh, through this Zoom over the next hour. I'm so excited to be here and talk a little bit about data collection and more specifically data collection for your festival. Uh, I wanna thank Jonas in advance for helping to monitor the Zoom chat because we will be chatting through the Zoom. Um, I am one of those people that loves talking to people and engaging in dialogue. So I'm gonna be asking for your active participation both in writing in the chat and possibly talking um, during, the, and during the, uh, the workshop today. So today we're talking about how to collect data for your festival. Jonas just shared a little bit about um, how he and I are connected. That's Jonas on the left, then Angie, then me. And I actually have on the same shirt, hey. Okay, no, all right. But anyway, um, the three of us have been involved in uh, supporting arts and culture organizations um, since 2015, I wanna say, but we've known each other much longer than that. And we find great joy in creating ways to support awareness and understanding about um, how to grow your organizations, how to create opportunity for reflection about the work that you're being, the work that you're doing, and then how to how to think about how to tell your stories and data is about is a part of that a part of that process. So today we're going to spend a bit of time going through these workshop goals, how to understand that different data collection methods serve different purposes, understanding the usefulness of data and how it's impacted by collection and storage uh, strategies and how to collect data from your audiences. Um, I want to thank you in advance for completing the registration questions. Um, they serve two purposes. Um, I'm going to say this. Part of, part of our work today will be us modeling what could be some practices that you use in your, organiza in your organizations or festivals, and other parts are just insights that'll help you think about things once you leave today's conversation. So before the session, 
you all each had the opportunity or someone from your festival had the opportunity to fill out a registration questionnaire. There were, I think, three or four questions where you just talked about your experience level in advance. We did that for two purposes. One, so that we could get a sense of who was in the room so that we can make sure that the information we shared with you was appropriate. But two, to also model how you might be able to get insight from your attendees in advance of coming to your festivals. So in some cases, depending on how your festivals are set up, if you have registrations, you can start to think about the type of questions that might make sense right in advance and um, collect data there. So part of what we're gonna be talking about is data collection methods. We're also gonna be talking about the types of data that you can collect, um, the ways that you can collect it, and some resources to help support that. Before we get started though, I gotta ask a question, so I'm gonna stop my screen. When you think of data, and specifically data collection, please write down in the chat three words that come to mind when you think of data. Remember, there's no judgment about the words that you choose, just whatever comes to mind. Three words that come to mind when you hear the phrase data collection. How does it feel? What resonates for you? I'm gonna check the chat. Difficult and analysis, important. Hard to analyze, assessment, analysis, and audiences. Wow, okay. Evaluation, feedback, challenging. I'm a teacher, sorry. How? Okay, I love it, I love it. We see, by and large, just in this quick data request, that if you were to just quickly look at the frequency, which is a you know a technical term in data collection, but I honestly just means the number of times people say something, more often than not, it's you know we're seeing challenging, hard, difficult, and so our hope today is hopefully to create one more person to say, wow, that was kind of cool because we think data is cool. I don't know. Maybe we can convince you that is just as cool. Um, but yeah, in addition to how, how it feels or what it how it lands, we also see um, the purpose of it, the impact, um, the, the role of it, unrepresentative, labor intensive. Um, let's see, I'm seeing um, spreadsheets. What, and, you know, a lot of the things that I see here are almost exactly opposite of creative people, right? Like, it just feels very different. And so for the person that said labor intensive, uh, Ellen, would you mind sharing why you said labor intensive? I think you can just unmute yourself, Ellen, I believe, yeah. Um, I guess because it takes a lot of, uh, well, first of all, finding the right survey platform that can, you know, that work can work for you. Um, and then writing the questions and then making sure uh, uh, you know, that it's correct and double checking it, which um, you know, it's so easy to make mistakes in these surveys. Um, and then you get you know, people who, you, know, you, you get the answers, but then they don't always fill it out correctly or I, I, I don't know. I mean, sometimes you can get some good information, but a lot of times it's it just, uh, you know, you look at the results and then you never look at them again. Yeah, and that is that is what. And so, thank you so much, Ellen, for sharing and for because I just called your name, so thank you for for doing that. But you know, that is part of the reason why when people think about data, it's like oh, it's almost always like, oh, why do I have to do it, or what is it gonna? How is it gonna serve me? And how do I know that I'm asking the right questions? And I think what we know and what we've seen over the course of our work, not just in the field, but just in life, like the extent to which your the quality of your data is sound is directly connected to the quality of your question, like what it is that you're exploring. So part of the first part of the process is getting really clear about what is it you're trying to figure out? And oftentimes that's the part that we think we understand, but usually the question that we ask is very, is slightly different. Um, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about that, except to say that is a starting point. So get excited because the very next 
workshop that Angie and Jonas are gonna do are about making sure you ask the right questions. Before we get there, we're gonna talk a little bit about what we heard, going back to the, the slide, in your registration responses. And again, the way that we ask the question in the registration um, is an example of what you might be able to do or what maybe what you're actually already doing for your registrations. So um, really quickly, we heard a lot of different responses. There were 32 people that registered for this webinar or workshop. And so what we did is we asked three or four questions, and then we went in and see what people said for two reasons. One, to get an understanding of, or rather three, get an understanding of what people were saying. Two, know how to tailor what we shared with you today. And then three, to kind of model how you might collect data in advance of your event. Um, so what we heard is that the majority of the people on the, that took the, that registered for the webinar said they had little experience with um, collecting data, collecting audience related festival data. Um, 24 said they hadn't collected any data before, or sorry, 24 said that they had collected data eight said that they had not at all. So that helped us kind of get a sense of where people were in what it was or, you know, where they where their experience level was. Um, when we asked the type of data that people were collecting, this is what people typically said. Um, we didn't include any frequencies or the number of times people said it. We just wanted to make sure that we captured the types of data. So, so that we could start to talk about, are these the best types of data to collect? To Ellen's earlier point, thinking about the questions is critical because the type of question you ask is really dependent on what it is that you wanna find. We know data collection serves multiple purposes. So we wanna make sure that the questions that we're asking is directly connected to what we wanna find. In this case, we, we heard from you that you're collecting information on contact information, race, maybe zip codes only, satisfaction, um, and then audience attendance, like how many people attended. Um, and then this is what we saw as the most challenging areas in ranked order. So number one means that the majority of the people that registered for this workshop said they had the most challenging time trying to identify the best techniques for collecting insights from participants. What I, I'm showing this to you again, for multiple reasons. One, um, to share with you that you're in the room with people that are all attempting to figure this out, right? Um, so you're not alone in your journey. What we know as Third Eye Partners is that data collection is often the times the bane of most arts administrators existence. It's like, why do we have to do it? I don't even wanna be here. They're forcing me to do it. But what we hope to invite you to consider is that this data collection could really serve multiple purposes. And when you identify the top questions that you're trying to explore, you can really start to get um, clear on how to do that. I just really wanted to quickly show you that when I, I did not put these findings in a chart or a graph, but that's something that you could have done if you were interested in reporting data. So there's a process of collecting the information, which we did do the registration. There's a process of analyzing data, which I'll show you quickly how I did it. And then there's a process of reporting data, which is what we just shared. Um, we don't need to be, uh oh, hold on, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, we don't need to be researchers or anal, anal, uh, data analysts or evaluators to quickly capture the major insights from our data collection. So I wanna quickly show you how I was able to give you that reporting on um, what I just reported about how people responded to the registrations. And this is one quick way to do it. You don't have to do it this way. And this way could become um, advantageous depending on the time you have and the a number of people coming to your festivals. Um, this is a smaller sample size or a smaller number of people reporting. Um, I might suggest another way, but I wanted to show it to you anyway. All right, so basically we just captured the frequencies 
And when we say frequencies, we just mean the number of time people said something. And for our purposes, we also color coded it so that we could see what stood out, you know, by level of intensity or whatever. So red we use because like, whoa, stop, no experience. So that's a color code that you could use. So if you look at just column four, the number of times you see red quickly shows you who had no experience in collecting data. Similarly, yellow is little experience, which is in the middle. So that showed us who had a little experience. And again, little experience is relative because we don't know, we didn't offer any, any um, framing on what it meant to have experience, but we just wanted to see how you described it. And little experience, just by a quick look, you can see, and all I did was highlight it. You could quickly see how many people said that. And then, and then green showed significant experience. Um, and so you could see that that had the lowest number. Same thing for who, who had ever collected data. And then again, for the type of, you know, what the challenge was. This is a really quick way to analyze data and then report it. Um, this is the analysis process. And mind you, this is really simple. You know, there, there are whole statistical software platforms to create more in-depth analysis. But if you wanna just capture frequencies, this is a really easy way to do it. Um, there's another way where you can kind of see if there's differences based on variables. Like if you wanna say, for those festivals that happen in the fall, for example, or in your case, for those people that attend our, our festival that are age 20 to 24, if you ask for age, then you can um, group their responses by their age and you can quickly see the same sort of thing. Anyway, that might be a little too detailed. So I just wanted to make sure that you could see the, the variety of ways that you can quickly analyze data and then report it. Again, in our reporting just then when I shared it with you, it was all narrative. Another way to report is um, graphics, tables. We'll talk a little bit more about that because I don't want to assume that you know anything or that you don't know anything. So, all right. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the roles of data. Oftentimes people have one way of thinking about what, what data can be. Um, but there are multiple ways of thinking about it. What I'd like to hear is you all share with me, how do you typically, why do you typically collect data? What role does it serve? If you collect data rather, what role does it serve? You can put it in the chat. I wanna see if, if and how your replies um, align with some of the rays that we're gonna talk about. Ooh, reporting to foundations and senior leaders. It helps when writing grants. Very cool and very true. Okay. Increase contacts. Um, does that does that does that particular statement meaning growing audiences for the person that said that? Um, to know if we are achieving our intended audience. Yep. Email changing the programs. Inform us about the effect. Yes. Yes. I always say, yeah, so, okay, yes, that's true. And then I typically collect data on students learning. It's, this is a part of my job in my role as a program. I collect on. Yes, exactly. So one of the reasons, again, that we talk about the role that it plays is because the role that it plays directly relates to the connection, the questions that we ask. So I'm gonna quickly show this table on your screen. Um, uh oh, uh oh, sorry. Um, so that you can see a lot of what you've already uh, shared is, I like to look at people and for some reason the screen, I just can't. Okay, here we go. Um, yes, here you can see that there are purposes for data collection and what it can contribute to. And so these ty this type of insight helps you get clear on the, what it is that you're gonna be doing with your data collection, right? In some cases, most people, or I should say in most cases, specifically when you think about festivals, it's easiest to collect information on contacts, contact information like, you know, name, address, email, so that we can stay in touch with you and let you know when else we're having other events. 
or demographic information like race, where you live in the city, in the state, um, socioeconomic status. Those are also data types of data that typically are seen in the festival collection process. But if you think about what you're trying to do with your data, then you can start thinking about the types of questions that might be most effective. So on the left side of the screen, you see, like most of you said, you can collect data to tell your story. Um, I think I also saw grant reporting. Um, those in the center are some other ways to talk about data. I think maybe talking about impact, improve quality process, um, align outcomes, improve accountability, increase organizational knowledge. And so you can see the data collection serves a variety of purposes, primarily marketing, or if you will, telling your story. Um, it supports your ability to fundraise. Um, it can help you demonstrate your impact. It can also contribute to your decision-making and your planning. And again, the types of questions you ask will be directly related. So if you're really trying to tell the story of, um, you know, paint a picture, if you will, of who comes to your festival. Um, the type of questions you might ask the people in your, um, in your surveys or data collection efforts might be directly connected to demographics. You're trying to get a profile of the person. If you're trying to understand how to improve your, your survey or your festivals, you might start asking questions about how you know, how did you experience the satisfaction related questions? You know, what could be changed? What did you like? If you're trying to see uh, maybe about ways to be, um, to advocate for fundraising purposes or policy change or, you know, getting additional um, visibility, you might ask questions like, why do you come to our festival? Um, what do you, what happens because you've come to our festival? Um, those sorts of questions. Again, the point of your, your data collection will directly link to the type of questions you ask. I'm going to pause because I want to make sure, I know we're talking fast, I want to ask if anybody has any comments or questions about anything I've said so far. No, is all of it pretty familiar, pretty standard? Okay, all right. Any um, comments or thoughts about maybe something I haven't said, but you want to share? Genevieve, maybe? I don't know. Hi. Yes. Um, I think it's always helpful to have like concrete, like I love case studies. So like just understanding how different festivals, like my feeling is all of the festivals are so unique and they have, you know, their own unique challenges, such as the one that we run. Um, and yeah, I just think that it's helpful to have very uh, concrete um, like uh, examples of good data collection that you've experienced. Mm -hmm. Just to mm -hmm. like put up, um, you know, like a narrative with the abstract concepts. So when you say that, are you saying like, I'm just gonna make up, there's a festival I think I've heard called Made in America, a Made in America festival. And so when you're thinking about the types of data that Made in America might, um, might document the type of data that they might collect and document might look like they're in Philadelphia. I don't even know if it's still going on, but that's a festival that was in Philadelphia whose whole purpose was to uh, meet during um, the 4th of July, or maybe it was a Labor Day, I think it was, to gather people around music to in introduce them to new talent. Um, and so when we think about the type of questions that they could potentially ask, they could run the gamut particularly um, when thinking about their goals, if they're meeting their goals. Are they introducing people to new talent? Are the people there only from Philadelphia? Have they, have they attracted new audiences that have come from outside of Philadelphia? Because those are two of their goals. Um, and then who comes? Those are three very different types of data that could help tell the story of who the festival is and or why they quote unquote matter. I hate to use the word matter, because I think it all matters, but you know, value is relative. So thank you for that. But that that's some that's a type of those are three sorts of questions that that festival could ask. Um, what type of when you think about the buckets of questions that maybe your festival asks, Genevieve? What kind do you ask? So our our 
up up to date our uh our festival like our data collection was really just about audience attendance like how many people came to the festival and i would be interested in understanding a little bit more because um it's a free art and culture festival in the fenway cultural district which is in boston it has all of the big institutions, the MFA, the Gardner Museum, the Boston Symphony Orchestra, Mass Historic Society, um, the Mary Baker Eddy Library. So these are all big historic institutions, some of which, some of whom you cannot go into unless you have a ticket or unless you're a member. So our festival is opening our doors, which is an invitation into the cultural district, a welcome. Um, and so my, I would like to understand, um, you know, our goals for the festival are for Bostonians to embrace their own historical heritage mm -hmm. because it is theirs. Mm -hmm. um, so I would want to know like which, you know, what neighborhood are they coming to the festival from? That mm -hmm. would be important to me. Mm -hmm. um, we have all sorts of neighborhoods right around the cultural district that I'm, I'm feeling like we're not hitting in the right way. Mm -hmm. um, so really it's about growing and diversifying our audience. Mm -hmm. uh, we've never really done any kind of in-depth um, audience surveys because it's a free festival and people like the only thing we can really, um, the only thing we can really uh, uh, gather is att attendance. Um, and so I'm trying to understand how we can, um, how we can gather. And I think it's really going to be around volunteers and maybe clipboards and <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Okay, we'll talk about that a little. Is there on your, uh, are the majority of the people that come, do they walk up? Do they register? Well, How that, do they yeah, so that's, you know, it's a festival that happens throughout the district and there are some outdoor events and there are some indoor events. And then this year there'll be virtual events. And so that's going to be easier when there's a virtual event because, yeah. you know, they have to register. So that's going to be interesting. So it's going to be important for us to put the, a few questions, not too annoying, not just too, to yeah. see where where they're coming from um and yeah so it's it's really various and so for some of our institutions we rely on the institutions um to gather audience data like the mfa mm -hmm. um so it's it's very uh it's very variable i would say well i hear you saying that there are three different types of data that you're attempting to collect in your surveys both who the people are, where they're coming from. That's mm -hmm. like the demographics, if you will. Yep. Um, if you're talking about historic preservation or exposing people to uh, what's right in their state, then it is, you know, questions like, why did you come or what did you learn? What was new? Mm -hmm. um, like so, sorts of exploratory questions to kind of get a sense of the impact that your space holds for the people that come. And then I'm hearing questions about what people thought about it. Mm -hmm. So it's like not just attendees, but it's what did you learn because you've been here, which is about impact. And then um, maybe what you were exposed to that maybe you hadn't before. And maybe even how you got here. Those mm -hmm. four different how you got here, yeah, would be yeah. to know. So, and it doesn't have to be um, cumbersome. Like uh, we'll talk a little bit about how you collect data or the, the types of data that you can collect. Um, and then when uh, Jonas and Angie meet with the group next time, whoever's able to show up, you can start talking about the way you ask the question so that Got people it. feel overburdened. Like maybe you create the multiple choice options that make sense for you so that people can just select it versus having to think about it. All right, let me go back in here. Elson, can I just mention, like, uh, you know, I think we we kind of default sometimes to to survey collection yeah. data, um, but there's also a, a lot of different ways to collect data. Like, in my college town, we had two colleges in the same small town, um, and one of the restaurants had a tip jar for each college, <laughs> and um, and so it was like a little competition there, um, but people just, you know, tipped according to the college, but you could do something like that at your festival entrance where they just slip a piece of paper just to say like, I am from this county or from this city. Um, and then you just count up the pieces of paper at the end and you have a rough count of where people came from. Um, so that's yeah. another like data collection method that's not with a survey. Right, and there's, 
Thank you for saying that, Jonas. There's so many ways to talk about how to collect data. And I'm gonna quickly go to the next slide because I think one of the other reasons why data collection starts to feel cumbersome is because of the ways we think about it is usually let's do a survey versus let's talk to people or let's find color coded ways to express our opinion. To Jonas's point, the dropping a paper in a in a um, in a bowl can be indicative of people sharing their thoughts in a really easy way. I think I see a, something in the chat. I can't see what that says. Um, Jonas, can you read that? I don't know. I can't see. Yeah, it's about uh, I think um, a free raffle. So oh, okay. putting out a card and putting it into a basket and um, and incentivizing filling out the paperwork. Ah, yes, there's always great, it's always great to have incentives because people respond to incentives. They're like, oh, wait, I can get something? Okay, I'll participate. Um, but I think there's opportunity to really think creatively in these spaces about how to gather data. Um, you know, sometimes I've seen, you know, boards that are up with different smiley faces, if you will, and people can like hit the board um, to show, you know, how many new number of people, the number of times people hit like a smiley face just reflects how, how they felt about it. Um, and then you count the number of times people said that. Anyway, we'll talk a little bit more about that um, moving forward in the next uh, workshop. But here on your screen, you have um, two different ways to think about um, the type of data that you can collect, quantitative methods and qualitative methods. And if you heard of data collection in some shape or form, you may have heard of these two terms before. Um, both are valid, although sometimes in academia, they will say that quantitative is more valid. And even oftentimes when we think about grant reporting, we often think about it's easiest and most tangible to capture the quantitative methods, but both are valuable because they offer insight. So if you look in this example, only one in 30 take the free ice cream. Interesting. So the fact is one in 30 took the ice cream. But when you get to the qualitative measure, you really explore the texture. Like what was it about the ice cream? How did you feel because of it? Which is just as important as what happened. And oftentimes when we think about impact, we want to report a number and say that that is what is most effective in reporting. But the, the texture that comes from the qualitative portion of the data collection is what helps to understand why people come back, for example. Um, so I want to share a little bit more about quantitative and qualitative methods because, again, when we did the registration, we saw that there was little experience. So we wanted to make sure that we offered some content that helped you process the type of information you want to collect. And I want to quickly go to the question types because when you think about the question types, that's usually indicative of the type of data that you'll get. So question, open-ended questions like what, how, and why are more inclined to get you um, responses that are a bit more textured in, in insight and are usually directly collected, connected to um, data collection methods like focus groups, interviews, case studies, photographs, wind of videos. Um, and so when you're thinking about that, sometimes, you know, when you're thinking about qualitative data, you're talking to fewer people because it's just a lot more information that's being gathered. However, when you're talking about quantitative data, um, we start to ask questions like how many, how often, how much, um, because they're really tangible details that you can find quickly. Um, you can ask a lot more people at the same time and the engagement level is really brief. And so this is when you start looking at surveys or even the example that Jonas mentioned where you drop a piece of paper, that is a quantity, it's a quick way to gather information. Um, I think, was that a question I saw in the chat? I'm not sure. No, I'm screenshotting some of these uh, charts for folks so that they can easily download them. Oh, nice, cool, okay. Um, okay, so then when we start thinking about who we talk to, 
which we saw as some of the things and that were challenging in your um, in your registration, there are a number of people that can offer insight into what happens with audience participation at festivals. And depending on your research question or what it is that you're trying to explore, you get a better idea of who to talk to. Oftentimes, because you're trying to report on the impact of the, of, the, of the festival that you're producing, you'll spend the majority of the time collecting data from beneficiaries, asking them who they are, why they've come, what do they think, um, what have they learned. Um, but you can also gather insights from your staff, from your funders and your partners. And I'm gonna spend some time just talking about partners that's slightly different than audiences, but it's important because your vendors, if, if they're selling different things to your audience could be directly related to um, what you choose to have featured during your festivals. Um, so I would say for your purposes, when you're thinking about audience planning for your audience, you'll hear from the audience what they need, what they want, why they come. Maybe they say, we wanna see more of these sorts of vendors. So when you talk to your vendors, you can start to get some insight from them too. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know that there are generally four groups of people that you can gather data from, but you get a sense of who to gather that data from, the clearer you are about why you're exploring um, and what you're exploring. Um, so now a little bit about data collection tools. Um, so we talked about festival registrations as a means for gathering some high level data at the beginning. Um, so for those of you that have festival registrations, um, I included a few types of registration platforms that can quickly um, embed questions that might help you gather data on your attendees. Now, let's say maybe Maybe you don't have a festival registration, or maybe it doesn't, a lot of the people don't respond to the festival registration. You might be able to use a bit.ly. If you go to bit.ly.com, this is like a QR code. So maybe you have your volunteers have the QR code. And as people leave, you have them scan it and ask them to complete a survey on their way out. Um, if you go to that website, you can see how to quickly generate a QR code with the type of questions that are most interesting for you to know and have explored. And then you can strategically place um, your volunteers or your staff members at the exits so that they have already gone through the program or they can be um, on site to just talk about it. Like this is a another way you can gather information if you have volunteers there, not too over, you know, over engaged, but like just around to say, hey, how's it going? Would you like to share some thoughts about your time here at the festival? That's another way to gather information. Um, as far as how to collect data and how to crunch the numbers, if you don't wanna count, count, count the frequencies like I did earlier, Survey Gizmo, Survey Monkey, Qualtrics are some well-known data platforms that help you both store data collect data and analyze data quickly. And more often than not, within both of all of these tools, once the data is collected, they will already generate the, the graphics for you. So you don't have to you know, figure out how to create them. If the data is in the platform and you run a report um, or you analyze the data, it'll show you quickly what, what the data says. Oh, there's a lot going on in the chat. Let's see. Um, see uh oh sorry oh yeah i just typed in quickly like some free festivals have done like an optional registration form so it's not required in order to attend the festival that you pre-register or anything but mm -hmm. you might use that tool like just saying like it's helpful for us to know or you might incentivizing incentivize registration say you get a free temporary tattoo if you register at a time or something like that uh, yeah yeah that's a way to like, even for free, um, come one, come all sorts of uh, festivals. You can still do some sort of registration. I don't know. Cool. No, that's totally, that's totally right. What I have on the screen now is some prompts to help you figure out what are you trying to explore? How can you collect it? When should you collect it? And which stakeholders should be engaged? And I'm wondering, 
of the questions on the screen, if someone wants to maybe model their responses, um, maybe with someone that said they had a little experience or maybe someone that said they had significant experience so that um, we can learn from each other. Um, someone, let me, I'm gonna stop my screen. Maybe someone wants to share what they prioritize in their data collection efforts, who they talk to, how. Is anyone open to sharing that information with people in the, in the workshop? Okay, I think I saw you raise your hand, Ty. Is that true or no? Yes. Sure, I'm happy to. Okay. Um, the, this I joined this in particular because we're actually moving the festival from indoor to outdoor this year and outdoor as we've all talked about poses more questions or challenges for collecting, but we, we, because we report to funders, but also to university administration, we collect, um, and it's all self-reported, uh, racial, ethnic identity, um, and then, uh, you know, their affiliation or not with Boston University if they say yes and they're a student we ask a whole bunch of more questions if they're students so um but really it's it's sort of we want to know why they came what made them interested because it's a free festival so it's very accessible and it's we're right on the green line um and but we also do uh, sort of the learning outcomes the the like what was your what intrinsic value did you get from this so we ask um a little bit about how we did. Were you greeted appropriately? Did people help you? So we want to know, like, how our volunteer staff did, and then um, whether they met new people, were exposed to a new culture or art form or uh, social issue. Um, whether they learned about people unlike themselves, and then whether they took any steps to seek out new information or new other arts opportunities. So those are sort of the learning outcomes. Like, did I meet people? Did I build community? Did I learn something, cognitive growth? And then um, whether they were like motivated to participate any further in art stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the general, like, did you like it? Mm -hmm. Joy, mm -hmm. happiness. <laughs> yeah, so I can see, and, and um, thank you so much for sharing that, that there, that he's identified, and I'm sure, I think you said you're, um, you've identified a variety of ways to kind of explore what happens with the people that attend, both from an engagement standpoint. Thanks for sharing your survey. For those that um, are not in the chat, Ty has shared his survey, um, the post-event survey, that'll be really helpful to look at, to kind of see the types of questions that they ask, um, given what it is that they're focused on, right? So again, you know, you think about what it is you hope happens because this happened, because this festival exists. Maybe you assess the engagement level, which is what I heard Ty mention. Um, you also assess um, what happened to people because they were there. Um, and and that's, that's about outcomes. But then also who they are. Um, Brad says, thank you. I don't know if you saw that. I also saw a question from Brad earlier. How do you differentiate between vendor data and participant data. Can you talk a little about a bit about that question, Brad, so I can make sure I can answer it correctly? Yeah, totally. So um, again, this is my first time ever doing like any sort of festival. So um, this year we are running our 14th annual Native Artisans Festival in the Quena. Um, and we typically do a survey um, that is kind of like a during, and you know, you could do it after the um, festival as well. Um, and there's one for kind of like participants or the public, and then there's one for our vendors. Um, and, you know, I guess in my head too, it's kind of like um, the vendor information is almost in, in the way I see it is almost like a pros and grows thing. Mm -hmm. And like um, the participants is very much kind of like what Ty is, was saying and sharing with before too. Okay. Um, and so I don't know if you guys have any other feedback about that or if like, um, yeah, if, or if I'm even asking a question with this, honestly, now, so. No, no, you know, I think I think what you're mentioning is really important, particularly for that slide that I put up that said, which stakeholders can you speak to, right? Because you can speak to your beneficiaries, or in this case, the people that attend 
your festival. You can also have surveys for your vendors and you can gather different sorts of insights. If you think about data collection serving purposes for planning, advocacy, telling your story, grant reporting, part of the insight that you can gather from a vendor is about planning, like what about their experience, you know, did they hear from your festival staff in a certain amount of time? What was it like to plan with or be a part of the festival? Um, maybe how their sales went, would they come yeah. back? Things like that would be the type of questions which would make it very different than the type of questions you might ask festival attendees, but both sets of data are valuable mm -hmm. for you know planning purposes, advocacy purposes, because maybe, maybe you find that, um, your festival entry fees are too high or too low. And so maybe that data becomes a piece that you advocate for additional funding for. So all of it can serve it, a serve a purpose. Um, does that make sense? I don't know. Totally, totally. We, um, and just speaking of that too, we added, well, I added a question onto the vendor survey and hopefully maybe this sparks some ideas on other people too, but that was just kind of like building out and networking, which was kind of like, hey, if you're interested in coming back next year too, is there anybody else you might recommend we reach out to so that we can- Yeah, day? absolutely. And even when you think about that question for a festival attendee, if you ask people, would you have, um, how willing are you or how likely are you to invite a friend to this festival? That's insight that could be helpful for planning purposes. Um, and depending, and I know this will be something that Jonas and Angie go into when they do their survey, um, because the way you ask questions can be the difference between really great insight to Ellen's earlier point or insight that's not really helpful. Um, so if questions are double barreled or asking multiple things in one question, you don't exactly know what people are responding to. Or if you have scales like Likert scales where people can choose um, very likely to attend again or not likely again. Those are, those are Likert skills or like, um, I, I love a multiple choice question because the person doesn't really have to think or write. They can just choose one of the options and maybe you have other so that if it's not covered there, that's helpful, but it's really helpful in that way. Um, let's see. Oh, bye Genevieve. She had to leave. Okay. Um, all right. Okay. Oh, let's see. Yeah. I see just as, a, as a quick uh, a point of order, I guess, just, you know, we wanted to leave everybody with this closing chart, um, but now is just a great time for any questions that you have. Um, and, you know, if you want any feedback uh, of what you're doing right now, um, now's a great time for that. So um, we've got about a, a little less than 10 minutes still. So um, mm -hmm. happy to answer questions. Um, and uh, clarify anything that uh, that was presented. Yeah, for sure. Comments, reflections, questions, thoughts. Anybody look at Ty's survey, have questions for him or, um, I'm gonna look at it quickly because I'm just curious to see what you have in here. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll share, are you okay if I share it with the group? Okay, for those that are still on the screen, I'm gonna share um, Ty's survey. So you can see the type of information. So this is some demographic information like affiliation. How did you hear about? And see, um, in, in the uh, presentation, when we talked about the platforms that you can use, this is a Google form, one of the ones that was mentioned there. Um, then you ask what they attended. All right, look at all the performances, which workshops, favorite thing about the festival. These are considered open-ended responses so that when people respond, they'll have to go through, I mean, you have to go through all the data and look it up, but these are open-ended, whereas these could be closed ended Here's a Likert scale that offers different types of options about questions. Yeah. This is can great. I, can I ask uh, Ty just quickly, like, how do you use this data? Like once you get the data and <laughs> you analyze it a little bit, uh, do you share this data with others or does it inform programming, marketing? Yeah, it we definitely do. And I and I it's funny at the beginning, the like, people were talking about like not enjoying data. I'm a nerd about this stuff. And the more I have continued in this work, 
I, I just love collecting data and analyzing it because it really does help me do my job better. Um, so we look at one of the one of the things like Mass Cultural Council requires you to report zip codes. Um, so we collect that at registration, but it's also really cool because we can say at the last live festival, I'm just sort of ignoring 2020. Um, we had, uh, I think that, I think it was 21 of the 23 Boston zip codes represented at the festival, right? Wow. Like that's, to me, that says we did a really good job of reach and we know which communities we didn't reach. Mm -hmm. um, and so that helps me figure out whether I want to change my advertising and marketing and promotion or not. Um, we, we, the demographic stuff is huge for us because my, ultimately my job is to build student engagement in the arts. So I weigh that, like how many BU community versus how many greater Boston community and how can I improve my reach to the students? How can I convince them differently? So um, and then just straight up, we it's all included in an annual report um, that we, you know, supply to everybody above me. <laughs> so all of this data, yeah, can serve numerous purposes. And I think like having just even that one stat of 21 out of 23, like you can use that for, of course, all your required reporting for funders, but also like vendors that might be thinking about your festival, you can say, well, we have a great reach here with 21 out of 23. Um, and you can use these data points, what you've learned from these surveys to really help you with marketing, help you with um, with vendor recruitment. Um, yeah, there's a lot of ways. The more that you know, the more that you're able to use this data. Um, and Allison, there was, a, there was a question from Susan about uh, the best timing to send uh, post-event surveys, mm -hmm. send and resend, mm -hmm. and how many times to resend. <laughs> Best practices, do you have thoughts about that? Yeah, you know, I think because people are inundated with emails, um, and I'm not sure if, Susan, when you say to send it, if you send it through an email, um, my assumption is that's how you send it. Is that a fair assumption? Yeah, I see a nod. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I would say two to three times really shortly after the, the event. Um, the, I would, you know, for events, because it's happened so quickly, I would send one right away. Um, maybe if the festival ends at 5 p.m., maybe the following morning when they go in their email, they'll be like, oh, wow, um, it's already here. Or you have someone there on site as they leave to make sure that they can send it, um, that they can, um, they at least they have access to it. Uh, and then if not the, the next day, I would send one a few days later. So like if, if your festival's on Saturday and you have someone at the door with a code or at least a link, or maybe I, you can also send text messages with um, the link to the survey. I'd send that ASAP, like no later than the, the morning after. Um, and by Wednesday, I might send another, um, just depending on how much how much of a response you've gotten. Um, in data collection world, we usually say two to three times um, within the first two weeks, just to really make sure that people, one, because sometimes you have to send it a few times for people to say, oh yeah, that's right, I did go to that thing. Um, so then they are like, oh yeah, let me respond. And then if you have an incentive, the first 50 people that respond will get a $15 gift card to something. And you'd be surprised how many people will do it just for a $15 gift card, maybe even $5. It, sometimes it's just the idea that they can get something that'll get people to respond. Um, okay, let's see. What about during event data collection? I've noticed everyone that does not go to the welcome to anyone. How to okay, some of the things that I like to do, and this might, I'll say it and then we can discuss it. And I, I know we have about three minutes. Not all data is gonna be captured in a survey or like a bowl like Jonas mentioned. Some of it can be call and response. Like if you have someone um, that welcomes people to the space, 
and you maybe you say, raise your hand if you've never been to our festival or something. Then you have a volunteer, maybe capture information really quickly. That's that's solely about attendance or would you come back? Now, I don't know how much, how your festivals are organized. So you might have to think a little creatively about how to gather that type of information. But call and response is always a good way. Um, you can have people walking around. Um, someone mentioned clipboards, that's still a thing. So you can do that. Um, we see, oh, Ellen's come back. Yeah, we also capture some data when we are virtual, but oh, if you're virtual, there's so many ways. On a Zoom, there are the polls, there are the little reactions. I've done um, conferences and I'm like, raise, raise your thumb if you agree with this statement. And so people will have the thumb raise, you know, the reactions down there or, oh, no thumbs when you're watching a movie. Oh, okay. Um, we also capture data when we, now I, the only thing I would suggest when you are gathering data by site, I would not do, I would not collect racial ethnic data by site because you just never know how people self identify. So I would not suggest that you try and spot check that. Um, that hopefully if you have an opportunity to have a pre registration or a survey after the end, at the end, I might ask that you use that um, just to be on the safe side because you don't want to under-report or over-report. Um, I know we're coming up against our time. Um, that most amazing stream is here, I believe. Oh, <laughs> Amazon Prime allows you to at least, oh. Yeah, if, you're, if you have Zoom on, like, so I would show movies sometimes in class because I'm a socialized teacher and um, Amazon Prime allows you, at least it did, to, to Zoom with kids and have it streamed. Um, so, but that was the only one I know of. Everyone else would, would block it out. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, wait, I see, this might be a big ask, but I would, what does that say? I would love to revisit this conversation after our respective events and hear, ah, so this is like a pre-test and a post-test. Like what happens now that you have this information and how did you use it and how did it support your yeah. your willing your ability to capture information i think that's great what or I'm even like hear. did you capture like were you successful in capturing what you wanted to capture yes <laughs> so. and because you all are here you guys may be able to become a community of practice with each other sharing resources jonas i'm not sure how information is shared amongst the people that sign up maybe i don't know is that something reasonable yeah, we do have uh, the number of people registered uh, for it. So we do have some contact info. I would also just, you know, take a peek at who was here today. Um, and you see, you know, whose festivals um, were represented and maybe like pick a buddy <laughs> and just uh, shoot them a quick message. Um, and you could uh, quickly do an accountability buddy sort of system. Um, but yeah, I think there, there might be some ways to be able to, to revisit this. Thank you guys so much. Come to the next workshop. Maybe it'll be a, it will be a continued conversation and even more detailed about the types of questions, ways to draft your questions. Um, thank you for your time, your energy, your reflection, your <laughs> engagement. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll mention quickly, if you want to save the chat, there's like the three dot thing and you click on that to save the chat. Um, a reminder that this will be posted on uh, the Cultural Council's website or YouTube page. Um, and then the next webinar, August 6th at 10 a.m. Uh, that's Friday, August 6th, about designing surveys. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. Any parting thoughts from Allison? I'm just so happy that you guys came and that you're interested in this topic because I do believe your ability to tell your stories through data can be the difference between increased visibility and attendance, more fundraising, and just more people getting connection to the arts. And that's what we're about. So thank you for coming and your engagement. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Oh, looks like someone's joining. Oh, yeah, that's I'll, I'll follow up, Alice. No problem. Oh, OK. Thanks. Bye, everybody. <laughs>